Hey folks, today we're going to discuss how to tune our jet skis so that we create a smooth transition or a smooth takeoff from idle. In our discussion, we're going to specifically talk about the low end circuit and how pop off pressure and the low speed jet play an important role in that smooth acceleration. One of the most common things that I see and read about are people who have rebuilt carburetors and they go out for the first time and they are hesitating or their acceleration is falling immediately when they blip the throttle. By understanding these principles behind you know, the low end circuit and pop off, you know, I'm, my hope is to teach you, you know, how to choose the right solutions when tuning your jet ski. I created this graph to help you better understand what it takes to achieve a smooth takeoff. On the y-axis, we have the amount of fuel being metered. On the x-axis, we have time. The yellow and the blue are going to represent the low and high speed circuit. And then this purple line is going to represent the amount of pressure required to reach pop-off. And that is based on manifold pressure. So let's imagine that we have our low speed adjuster set at one turn out. All right, we start the ski up. This yellow line represents the amount of fuel being metered. But as soon as we want to accelerate and hit that throttle right here, we should actually be able to start to increase RPMs because we're delivering more fuel, okay? More fuel is being drawn in by manifold pressure. And as that pressure increases and rises, if it meets this pressure gradient right here, that means we are achieving pop-off. When pop-off happens, the little diaphragm in the carburetor will press down on that spring loaded lever it will release the needle and more fuel will enter the fuel chamber and when that happens air velocity is going to take over and the more air you you send in the more fuel should be drawn in and you are going to increase rpms and get to speed pretty quickly i do want to show you uh, and make a point that this low end circuit does not just shut off at pop off you actually will still meter fuel through this entire range but it's going to actually plateau because um, when you set that low speed adjuster you're setting the maximum amount of fuel that you are going to be metering so um, you can only really contribute to about one third of the entire fuel circuit with the low speed uh, screw but just to clarify things smooth takeoff will only occur if our low circuit is metering enough fuel in a given time to reach that specific gradient. So we have to reach this point right here in order to achieve pop off. Now let's talk about why you might experience a hesitation, a fall, or a bog when pressing the throttle. A hesitation is a slight absence in fuel when the manifold pressure is increasing close to pop off. Um, so in this example, let's just say our low speed adjuster is set at uh, three quarters of turnout. So it's, it's on the lean side. So when we go to accelerate up, all right, we are accelerating, we're generating manifold pressure. But as we get to pop off, we are kind of you know, reaching our max metering limit. So in this moment of time right here, this little gap, you might experience a hesitation or a skip in the acceleration process. So um, usually if you give it enough time and let that fuel meter in, you will reach pop off, all right? So, um, but in this situation, you know, we're on the leaner side, you're not metering that much fuel, and eventually you're gonna be able to hit pop off and clear out and be able to uh, accelerate up. Likewise, when we have an acceleration fall, um, it's still a lean condition um, but it's a little more drastic than a hesitation. In this situation, with a, with a fall, um, because we're so lean, we're gonna try to accelerate up, 
but because of our mixture having way more air than fuel, um, you know, we're not going to be able to have combustion. So our RPMs will fall right back down to idle. Um, you know, people uh, commonly mistake acceleration falls as bogging. We'll discuss what a bog is just in a moment. Sometimes, uh, if you accelerate fast enough, you generate so much air in a short amount of time that you will stall and shut off the ski. Now a bog is different. Uh, when a bog occurs, uh, the low speed circuit is too rich. So let's just imagine a situation where you're afraid to be lean on the low end circuit. So you turn the adjuster screw one and a half turns out. So that is a more rich setting than what your manual specifies. So this line represents our idle. Okay, when we throttle up, okay, we're, we are adding fuel, we're increasing RPMs, um, but we hit pop off at an early stage of that. And when that happens, um, your acceleration will be slower. It will be sluggish. There might even be sputtering. And this is the reason why, okay? If you recall, pop-off is, is that moment where you lift up on the needle and more fuel enters that fuel chamber, okay? So when you have more fuel from the low end, you have a, a low pop-off where you reach pop-off quickly. You know, at this point in time right now, you have so much fuel um, you know, flooding into that chamber that your acceleration is gonna be sluggish. Now you will accelerate and you will get on plane, but it's not gonna be crisp and smooth like you would experience on a leaner setting. Before we attempt to fix a hesitation or fall, first thing you wanna do is make sure your low and high speed screws are set at the manufacturer's recommendation. You know, the manufacturer is the one that tested this over and over again, so they know what it should be set at. So the first two things that you can do is you can either turn the low speed adjuster out to richen the circuit, or you can take the carbs off and you can increase the pilot jet size so that we can get closer to pop off manifold pressure. So uh, this green line indicates, you know, when we do that, we're adding more fuel to the low end circuit at idle and we're getting closer to pop off. Now the rule of thumb for increasing pilot jet size is this. If you have to turn your low speed adjuster more than two turns out, then you need to go up a size pilot jet. A, a common example would be going from a, a 65 or a 67.5 to a 70 or a 75 pilot jet. Another thing that you can do is lower pop-off pressure. These skis came from the manufacturer with higher pop-offs because they needed to meet the EPA's fuel emission requirements. If you're experiencing a hesitation or fall, and you wanna get closer to the low end circuit, you can lower the pop off by adjusting the springs in the carburetors. Just make sure that if you have dual carbs, um, your pop off pressures are within one to two PSI of each other. The one thing that you do wanna watch out for when lowering your, your pop off is not having a too low pop off. So if your pop off pressure is too low, you are going to experience a bog or a slow and sluggish acceleration like we talked about earlier. Going back to the point about meeting the EPA's fuel emission standards, in 1997, SeaDoo started to put accelerator pumps on most of their carburetors. The EPA test was actually done at idle RPM speed, and manufacturers realized quickly that if they put a smaller low pilot jet in, or they increased the pop-off pressure, or they eliminated one low-end transition port inside the inner venturi, they were able to lean out the mixture at idle and thus pass the emissions test. Um, but in doing so, uh, what they did was they created a lean spot right when you blip the throttle, right when you accelerate. So you would experience that lean hesitation or you would experience that fall if you didn't have this accelerator pump pumping that little bit of extra fuel 
when it needed it. So if you enjoyed this video and it was helpful to you, please like, subscribe, and share to all your friends in the jet ski community. Um, you know, my goal is not only to show you how, but to teach you why we do the things that we do. So thank you very much and God bless.